Now we're going to zoom in even further. Take off the mammoth skins, get rid of the glaciers, at least for now, and look at the period in which humans invented agriculture, cities, beer, writing, nuclear weapons, and Twitter. All those things that we call progress. And we're going to see that there is an abundance of evidence here that the alarmists cannot explain with or without their computer models and they'd like to get rid of, including that the warming trend they've seized on over about the last 50 years as proof that humans are disrupting the climate in unprecedented ways is actually part of a long cycle of natural warming and cooling that goes back to the last retreat of the glaciers and indeed a great deal further. A cyclical pattern that we must be able to explain if we are to call ourselves informed laymen or climate scientists. We call the interglacial that we're living in now the Holocene and we used to be in favor of it. In fact, until quite recently, we unabashedly called the warmest part of it from 9,000 to 5,000 years ago, that would be 7,000 to 3,000 BC, the Holocene climatic optimum, a revealing term. And its existence underlines that even within this generally balmy period, by the standards of the last two and a half million years, temperature has not been stable. And everybody knows it, even the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Their earliest publications plainly showed the medieval warm period, though it later became such an embarrassment to them that they tried to get rid of it, leading to one of the great data scandals in the whole debate over man-made global warming. You know, Al Gore sneered at it, the so-called skeptics will sometimes say, oh, this whole thing, this is a cyclical phenomenon. There was a medieval warming period after all. Well, yeah, there, there was, there, there it is right there. <laughs> there are two others. But compared to what's going on now, there's just no comparison. It did vanish from IPCC publications, but lately it's made a bit of a comeback. And one of the reasons it's done so is that all the stuff is hidden in plain sight. I know I keep coming back to that point, but it's extremely important. When I was raising money for this documentary, I ran into predictable sneering about, oh, you think you've discovered something all the scientists have missed over the last couple of hundred years. No, quite the reverse. I'm talking about the stuff that everybody has known about for the last couple of hundred years. And if you look at people writing on anything other than the supposed man-made global warming crisis, they still talk without hesitation about the medieval warm period. For instance, here's Carolyn Harris writing in Magna Carta and its gifts to Canada. The temperate climate created by the medieval warm period of circa 900 to 1300 resulted in ample grain harvest and an expanding population. By the early 13th century, England contained just under 3 million inhabitants, while Scotland and Wales, whose people relied on animal husbandry instead of agriculture, each had a population under half a million. But then, she comments, of the 14th century, the period of mostly warm temperatures that had prevailed during John's reign had come to an end. As the climate grew colder, harvests failed. The Great Famine of 1315-17 to brought an end to the steady population growth that England had experienced since 1066. The bubonic plague or Black Death arrived in England in 1348, resulting in the deaths of between one-third and one-half of England's inhabitants. When you look at the alarmist predictions, they say two more degrees and we're in the soup. You know, the floods will come, the hurricanes will blow, there'll be a bad moon rising, deserts will spread, and every imaginable consequence will be bad. Just about. Okay, I did see one story saying that global warming might create conditions for better vintage grapes for the Quebec wine industry. But essentially, there's not meant to be one good thing that drops into our laps if it gets warmer. Global warming paradoxically causes not only more flooding, but also more drought. Everything is going to be terrible. They also say it's happening now, by the way. Canada's environment minister attributed the Fort McMurray wildfire to global warming several times. The reality is we're seeing the impacts of climate change in Canada. Right. You know, we have real, really big forest fires, boreal forests that we've never seen before, flooding in, you know, Calgary and across um, our prairies. Uh, we have droughts. Our Arctic is literally melting, and even Prince Edward Island, it's like a small island state where, where it's receding um, by 43 centimeters a year. But the medieval warm period was actually nice. Harvests were bountiful, cities grew, trade expanded, learning flourished, architecture reached new heights, and in England in particular, the institution of parliament arose. Al Gore keeps saying we're going to have a nature hike through the book of Revelation. Well, we didn't get that in 1200. 
We got Gothic cathedrals. We got universities. We got hospitals.